there are times as a person who plays video games where you have several games that you have played and have just never finished, but always have wanted to. It's almost like an itch that needs to be scratched every time you go through your game library and you think, I should really get back to that game. I really need to finish it. I want to see how it ends. But maybe next time. And it sits there until the next time you have the want or need to finish it or just replay and go through the experiences that you went through before. And that's how Chroma Squad has been for me for the last few years. I tried playing this game twice before. Both times I got halfway through it and then dropped due to newer games releasing or just wanting to try other games. I've always wanted to go back and finishing it though, remembering how much fun I had playing it. So now that I stream a few times a week over on Twitch, it's totally cool, casual, I never get upset. Oh my god! Do it that time, please dodge. Oh my god. Oh. See, totally chill, happy face. I thought this would be the perfect time to go back and actually finish the game and of course give a review on it on my YouTube channel. And of course, if this is the first time you've seen one of my reviews, and I say that as if I've only done one before this, I like to refer to my review, my reviews as uh, casual gamer reviews, meaning that normally I am someone who drops games as soon as I get bored, sidetracked, newer games, etc. Hence this game getting dropped twice before. My goal for the games that I play on Twitch and also of course plan on reviewing on this channel is to always to at least beat the main story and whatever I want to complete apart from that will of course help my rating. An example being is if I finish the story and just end because I wanted to finish it and just got to the end as fast as possible, it will have a lower score than a game that I finish but then want to continue to do more like collectibles, side quests, aimed 100%ing, all trophies, all achievements, etc. In this review of Chroma Squad, I will touch on the story, customization, combat, and then I will talk about a little bit of a spoiler territory when it comes to one of the endings. If you care, I will make sure to put a timestamp when I get there so you can skip it, but it will, of course, affect my review in a bit because a lot happened in that section of the game and I won't say positive or negatively but it will be a part of the review and then once all of that's done I will conclude with my casual gamer rating. The story in Chroma Squad is very interesting in my opinion. The main gist of it is that you have a team of stunt actors that become independent and make their very own Power Rangers show making their own costumes, Megazord, episodes, and hiring other actors to dress up as villains to beat up and gain fans and money. Sounds perfect. The story as you play it feels very linear at first. You go through a few levels and then eventually you go through the season finale with a boss fight, rinse and repeat. But the choices you make in the game does change what you get to do. An example is their email system where fans, companies, or even enemies send you emails concerning various things and most will have choices for you to respond to. Sometimes these choices can add stages for you to complete later on before a season finale. And also you can get like materials, fans, money right away, but I really do like without it adds stages. There's also three different paths your story can take depending on what you do in a certain mission near the end of the game. This of course will help the replay ability as you can experience multiple other stories, missions, and endings. The story overall, I enjoyed. There are multiple times in the dialogue that put a smile on my face and just made me laugh. It was very Power Rangers-esque with the corny one-liners, friendship and teamwork can beat all evil, all the catchphrases really put the nostalgia in my veins. Even though there were some points of it being predictable, apart from, you know, a few curveballs, it still was never a drag to get through the cutscenes. I enjoyed almost every one. When it comes to customization, it is probably one of my favorite parts of most games, not even just RPGs. Even when it's just cosmetic changes and not adding any bonuses to the gameplay. Chroma Squad I feel does this very well. After the tutorial you start off by making your own ranger team. Each ranger has its own role of either leader, techie, salt, scout, 
and assist with each one of them having different starting stats and of course different abilities and weapons that you can unlock later throughout the game. You then can assign an actor to fill in each of these roles. They also have different stats that can further benefit the role that they are placed in. These actors are honestly pretty great by the way of being a vast variety of choices including an alien, robot, even a beaver. After that you assign them a color and of course a name. I use this as a way to incorporate my Twitch chat, assigning them different rangers with, which made it much funnier and interactive later on when their names were said in dialogue and most of, I mean all of the rangers are actually my friends in real life too, so it is also added on as they watched. You also have a home base you visit between each mission that are full of ways to customize or improve your team. You have the shop where of course you can buy armor or weapons which equipping these will also change how the ranger are looking in a combat which I think is very cool because you know when you put on a different piece of armor you should look different. There is also a crafting area for weapons and armor as well as higher end materials needing to craft or even make parts of your megazord and when you don't have any use for your armor that you've bought recently you can recycle them for a chance to get materials back. Unfortunately there is no way to like just sell your armor for cash which is kind of annoying uh, but money eventually isn't even a problem especially near the end game speaking of money besides buying armor and weapons you can also spend money to upgrade your studio giving you buffs in combat as well as discounts in the base and also higher chances to recycle your armor which by the way I got unlucky a lot an example is when you pull up a piece of armor that you want to recycle, it gives you percentages to receive back certain materials. I got zero materials back on armor multiple times. Uh, you can get all of them. I may have did that once. It happens. Lastly, you have the actor page. This is where you can choose each ability your rangers unlock as you level up. These can vary from passive, support abilities, strong attacks. Uh, weapon abilities because each ranger has their own weapon that they can use all of these to give you advantages this page also has an area where you can customize your studio from the name to what your ranger team is called all the catchphrases your zord it has it all I use this of course to have callbacks from previous streams and me and my chat would all yellows out with the team I feel like the customization was my favorite part of this game I think most kids who watch Power Rangers growing up probably dreamt of being one themselves. This game definitely brought that out, and me at least, making it to where you can make your own team, name them after you and your friends, and just have a good time. I only wish for more variations of armor, not even stat-wise, but just cosmetics as I would find myself only picking between two different sets each season, but that was just me being very nitpicky. Uh, I also wish that you could change the color of your rangers in multiple episodes again just being nitpicky that it, it was only for me because I the people I was making them weren't in chat when I was creating them so I just picked colors I think they would like and then asked them later on thinking I could change it but I couldn't but yeah honestly the only thing was just more armor and maybe change stuff later on but again that's just me being nitpicky the customization was great this is an indie company and they put a lot of love and thought into this to make it feel like you're actually part of your own created ranger team and i think that is awesome and of course we have the combat which is where you'll probably spend most of your time playing chroma squad it's a tactical rpg style with grid movement and attacks your team gets to go first and once all your units act the enemy will go you can also switch like pick which of your teammates go first to strategize exactly where you want to go and sync up your attacks and whatnot. Each character has its own movement range and different abilities that can attack adjacent from range, multiple spots, AoEs, supports, you name it. The way this game is different is its teamwork function. You place a unit in a position and select teamwork. For me, it was Y on the Xbox. And then every other team member who can reach that spot can be thrown additional tiles providing more opportunities to reach enemies that are way too far away or to even get members who are critical on health to a safer spot. This teamwork function 
also is used for team attacks. Placing a ranger adjacent to any enemy and selecting the teamwork option, then attacking said enemy with a different ranger will make both participants attack the enemy for increased damage. This attack can use two, three, four, and even your whole squad. Using all five rangers will unleash your team attack, uh, also called the finishing blow, dealing a crazy amount of damage. Weapon attacks can also work in teamwork attacks, as long as all members who are participating in it have them available to use and, of course, not on cooldown. Each mission that has combat has its own director missions. These are little side missions you can do to earn more fans and or money. These are what makes each combat different from the last and not just winning as soon as possible. They can range from surviving a certain amount of turns, winning in a certain amount of turns, defeat all minions before a boss, hurt the boss each round, use one character to damage each turn or finish off the boss, etc. Most boss fights will ask for you to finish them off with the before mentioned finishing move teamwork attack. Thankfully, once they are in range of that, the game will notify you so you don't just have to keep guessing. Some episodes will also include a mech fight. This is fairly simple as you only select attack, defend, or one of your special moves. Attacks are just hit the button at the right time, getting a perfect hit does more damage and the longer you can combo attacks before missing or defending will keep increasing the damage with successful attacks. These fights are fairly simple and if you are like me and barely upgrade your mech because you can't find cardboard anywhere, you still won't have hardly any trouble finishing these fights. Overall, the combat for me in this game was just okay. I like the director instructions to help the combat not get stale between each episode, and there are some points where you do have to think with the teamwork function or what units should act first to make your, your turn the most proficient. But for the most part, the difficulty is kind of all over the place. You'll be cruising through multiple episodes and all of a sudden it'll spike up. Not saying difficulty is bad, I even selected a harder difficulty at the beginning, but it usually feels out of place because the difficulty increasing is never gradual. The one feature I wish would be included in the combat is a way to undo a unit's movement. It's in most tactical RPGs for me, so I'm kind of used to it. Like in Fire Emblem, you move to a spot, you see what kind of damage you can do, you see, oh, I'm in trouble, you press B, whatever. In this game, multiple times I would get to a spot to either use a ranged attack or use teamwork to throw one of my stronger units to a spot that can attack, and I am one or two tiles off. And it gets very annoying because now I have a unit in the center of the map glowing yellow and they can't do anything. So I just wasted their action. So I would find myself counting each tile to make sure that I could limit my mistakes. I just wish that there was an option of if I moved to a spot, I could just press B and I could undo it. Of course, if I, you know, attack somebody, I shouldn't be able to undo that. Or if I pressed Y for teamwork, I shouldn't be able to undo that. But just moving, I think it would be fairly easy to ask for a second chance, please. For the most part, I had a great time playing Chrome Squad. It just comes off as a silly game to play. Tons of love in it put into it by the indie company. But there was one point in the game where everything kind of took a turn for the worse in my case. I'm going to be talking about spoilers for a little bit regarding the secret path, so that's something you don't want to get spoiled, you can skip to this time. So now that we're in spoiler territory, I went on the secret path pretty much by accident, because the mission that decides your path became so hard I had to defeat both bosses because I can do more damage uh, to outdo the healing. Uh, this was also before I knew that there was multiple paths so I almost felt like I had to defeat both bosses because that's what felt right for me to survive. Uh, this path makes it to where you only have access to your assault character which for me was my green ranger. Uh, normally, it's 
your damage dealer. But he also gets a few additional powers to hopefully help that he's being alone. These powers are... Yeah, you get to deal extra damage, but you receive extra damage. You have a move that lets you travel multiple tiles, and you can deal damage through the enemies in that line, which, for me, didn't work ever as I thought it should work. I could have also just been doing it absolutely wrong. You also have a healing ability that also turns back everyone that moved that turn to their original space. So at least you gain a healing attack, but the cooldown is kind of rough. And I also didn't want to use the, the ability that let me do extra damage because I didn't want to die. I will say, like, story-wise, this, this path was great. Everything else, gameplay-wise, got rough. Uh, the difficulty, amount of enemies, doesn't change in consideration you now only have one member. There are multiple missions where you have to survive against a never-ending spawning wave of enemies with only that one healing ability in your arsenal. This was all okay at first, as I would just have to strategize hard to get through the obstacles, changing equipment and abilities, and just overall how I had to play. Uh, I died a lot at the beginning, but again, I would just go through the base, change all of the, my equipment to go and stats in a different way, and just try again, and I would succeed in a few times. But then the game started to break. The main mission to note was my one ranger against multiple ranged enemies with one boss, and if any of them hit you, you also lose movement range. So even after changing equipment to prioritize dodging, it was mainly based on luck that you could get to them and defeat them. But the boss also had a charging attack that if he hit you could nearly one shot you, but you had an opportunity to interrupt it based on damage dealt. This part of the game decided to not work, to even if I was able to reach the boss and do the damage that it asked for, sometimes it wouldn't matter and he could still use the attack and kill me. After multiple times attempting this episode and dying and losing my cool, I looked it up to see if anyone else in this game community had the issues. They only ever talked about the difficulty, never about specific bugs. So at that point, my only option was to turn the difficulty down to normal to have a chance. And even then, that mission and multiple ones after that was just not fun. Still, would be very difficult to the point where I could have to break the game myself. Doing this, I would have to move to a corner of the map. The enemy would just stop moving to where I could keep skipping my turns to refresh my, again, one healing ability. To where, after that point, they would finally start to chase me and the onslaught would continue. Having to do this to just succeed did not feel right or fun to do, but sometimes it was the only way to survive a mission. There was even a mission against a boss where the director wanted me to win in 8 turns. It took me over 60 turns. At this point, I had everything I could upgrade to the highest point it could. Best equipment, you know, abilities. I feel like there should have been no issue here. And that's how over half of the missions felt to me. Just not fun and unbeatable unless I had to break the game and did not feel right to do. I feel like the game could have just put the difficulty down a tad since I only had one ranger to make things feel more doable. And this is not me saying difficulty is bad. I enjoy difficulty in RPGs, tactical RPGs, strategy, whatever. I enjoy difficulty even when this first started to happen with only having one ranger, I saw it as a challenge to get through these missions because in my head I was like, oh, it's only going to be one or two episodes and then things would go back to normal. And then hell just kept continuing and game kept breaking, not just on the ranged attack mission, just a lot. So I just started to not be fun. 
let's, well, we can get out of spoiler territory now and go on to my final thoughts. Now we're all here. I don't think a lot of people had to skip the spoiler thing, but in case you did, we're back now. Everything being said, mixed with the end parts of the game, hard to look back at this game in a 100% positive light. The first two thirds of this game, I had a really good time throughout it. It was just the last bit that put a bad taste in my mouth. The only thing I can think of for the game going badly for me is that, of course, I've said this a few times, very small indie company, Beholder Games. This game was released one year on the PC, and then multiple years later, it was then ported to console. And sometimes, porting to consoles goes badly. So maybe just the Xbox has these problems. I just have to go off of what I played, which was, of course, the Xbox part. So that just kind of sucks. Saying that, though, I love the effort and love that was put into this game by Beholder Games. I even want to play their other games that they have. They even have a Dungeons and Dragons-esque game that I probably will 100% play on stream and eventually review. I do still think that this game is a fun experience, and I would recommend Power Rangers fans to play this, but of course I would give them warnings to the difficulty spikes and possible bugs that can cause frustration. I do also want to say that before I even play this game the first time, and going back to it the second time, playing it once before, and then going into it this time, none of these times I expected a 100% perfect game. And that's fine. I didn't have high expectations for this game, and even then, still brought out fun laughs. But with, you know, not having a perfect game, sometimes things go wrong. That's fine. Everything being said, again about the bugs, difficulty spikes, whatever. I, me myself, would give this game my casual gamer score of 5 out of 10. Fun, I just wouldn't go back to play it again. I don't really see the need to see those other endings. But again, I can look at the fun experiences, it just happens to come back with also negative experiences. I hope you guys enjoyed my review of this game. I would also like to hear your particular thoughts on this game if you have played it before, or have ever wanted to play it, I say go for it. Just think about the things I said. Why don't you come join me on Twitch sometime? I play through these games I review live. Or you can subscribe to this YouTube channel because, you know, I do post all the live streams several days after, of course, but they do get posted on this channel as well as my edited videos of reviews and then possible other stuff I want to do editing-wise and series and whatnot. Either way, I hope I see you another time. If not, enjoy yourselves, but goodbye.